So let's let's get started. Uh, we, we were playing COBOL, and it's an amazing game. And we got really excited about platformer physics. So we decided, let's look into platformer physics and talk about that stuff. So we started to look with looking at jump height, which is a really interesting thing. And if it's one thing a platformer character knows well, it's how to jump. So COBOL is a very good company here with Mario, possibly the most iconic platformer character ever. Uh, so we decided to measure how high these, all these characters jump. Are you ready, Petri? Uh, so starting with Mario, um, he can jump over obstacles about four times his own height from complete standstill, you know, just jumping straight up into the air and over things four times higher than him. Cobalt doesn't jump quite as high, he only managed to do 1.8 of his own height. And uh, the high jumper of the crowd, Super Meat Boy, he managed to do five times his own height. And naturally, Petri and I tried this. Um, so I, personally, can jump over an obstacle that is 0.23 times of my own height. Uh, Petri does a little bit better, 0.27 of his own height. Suffice to say, neither Petri or I are platforming characters. So, moving on to falling speed. No, it says jump time. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're right. Uh, when you run, jump really, really high, falling down is going to take a long time too. So say I, I could jump over an obstacle like Mario, something four times my own height, and I'm about two meters tall, so that would be eight meters of falling. So, to figure out the time it takes for me to fall these eight meters, we need to know the gravitational acceleration constant of the Earth, which happens to be 9.8 meters per second squared here on Earth. Uh, so, doing some magical math, we can figure out that it would take me 1.3 seconds to fall these 8 meters. But, I also have to go up before I can come down. So it's going to take me about twice that time to make it this giant leap into the air for 8 meters. And then come back down again in 3 seconds, which it almost works out too. It's a long time to be jumping in a platform game. So, looking at the time actual platform characters takes, Mario takes 0.83 seconds for an entire jump, peaking at exactly half that time. Cobalt takes 0.77 seconds for an entire jump, and he's also peaking at the halfway point. Granted, he also jumps somewhat lower, so we'd say he's reasonably like Mario. Meat Boy, the high jumper of the crowd, takes a whole second for a jump. Considering he jumps also quite a bit higher, I'd say this is also in line with everyone else. The interesting part here is when Petri and I tried this, we managed to stay in the air about 0.7 three of a second, which is amazingly in line with the platformer characters. <laughs> so, seeing how Mario and his friends somehow managed to jump both higher and faster than we do, um, there's some gravitational shenanigans going on here. Uh, so when talking about falling things, there's the concept of terminal velocity, which means that the air you're falling through is pushing back at you, with the same strength, the gravity is pulling you down, so you stop falling faster after a certain period of time. So if I were to jump out of an airplane, it would, I would fall for a while, and I would reach my terminal velocity, which is 56 meters per second, or about 200 kilometers an hour. Uh, and that, reaching that speed for me would take 12 seconds if I jumped out from an airplane. Uh, Mario, on the other hand, and this is a bit complicated to measure, so we only did Mario. Um, but Mario manages to reach his terminal velocity in 0.1 of a second. I don't know if you can see it in the back, but it's there. So Mario reaches his terminal velocity way, way faster than an actual person would. So, all this quick falling stuff means gravity works differently somehow in platformers. Granted, it's a bit hard to make direct comparisons between like the fantasy land of Mario and the actual real world, but through the magic of Wikipedia we can find out that Mario is about 1.5 meters tall, and using that, we can extrapolate all the other forces in this world. So we take Mario, we walk him off a cliff, we time the, we measure the time it takes for him to fall, which happens to be 120 pixels, which works out to be about 11.4 meters in the real world. And this fall for Mario takes about half a second. Um, so the gravitational acceleration in the real world, Petri, is 9.8 meters per second squared. The gravitational acceleration in the Mushroom Kingdom is a whopping 91.28 meters per second squared. Hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, graph malfunction, here we go. So that's nearly 10 times the gravity on Earth. And sustained exposure to something like 5 times the gravity on Earth is very likely going to make you faint and quite possibly kill you. 
ten times. I don't know, I don't know what, what happens. But somehow these platformer characters manage to jump four times their own height in this gravity and smash through blocks with their head and everything. They truly are the heroes of our time. <laughs> So, uh, actually, in order to do this presentation, we ended up doing a lot of research. We actually spent three days measuring all the different platforming games and trying to figure out why the controls are so different. And uh, we had about an hour-long presentation about this subject. Uh, but, uh, I've, like, if we agree that you guys go and vote for Jesus versus Dinosaurs, I can kind of compress this into five minutes. So, basically, what we found out is that controls in platformer games vary a lot. Uh, you basically have the lowest jump we could find was uh, from another world, which was 0 0.06 of the character's height, which is basically just the lead. Uh, the next lowest is Braid, which is like one times his own height. Uh, Spelunky is about two times the character's height. Uh, Super Meat Boy is about five times his height, and uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, running jump is 5.3 times the height. There is also a variation in the time it takes to do the jump, uh, Spelunky being 550 milliseconds, <laughs> Super Meat Boy being 1 second and 50 milliseconds. Uh, 770 milliseconds was actually what it took co for Cobalt and uh, Braid and a few other games, so 770 milliseconds is is the thing if you're making a platformer game. Mm. So, uh, all this, like, why, why are the controls so different in platforming games? Because we've had a lot of platforming games, surely we know how to do platforming controls, uh, but there is a reason why, why these are so different. And the reason is basically game design. Uh, it depends on what kind of a game you're making, uh, defines what kind of controls you need to do for your game. Uh, for example, imagine playing Another World with Super Meat Boy. Uh, you could just basically jump over those motherfucking worms. Uh, or playing Super Meat Boy with the Limbo character. That would not go well. Uh, but this, this small detour, uh, detour we, there's this uh, design tool by Jeff Tunnel. And the idea of this design tool is that you concentrate on one aspect of your game. Uh, you take one thing and you concentrate on that and you do basically everything in the game in relation to this one thing. Uh, and this explains why the controls are so different in games. So let's look at Mario, for example, here. Uh, Mario is a game about jumping. Uh, everything in Super Mario Bros. 1 is about jumping. Uh, jumping is the thing in that game. So if you look at the things you can accomplish in that game with jumping, uh, first of all, you move around the world with jumping. Uh, you can also jump over pits in Mario. Uh, you can jump over obstacles. Uh, you jump onto enemies to kill them, as opposed to shooting them. Uh, you can jump onto turtle shells to launch the turtle shells. You can jump onto turtle shells to stop the turtle shells. You can jump on to collect coins. You can jump up to get power-ups. Uh, you jump to break bricks. Uh, you jump to break bricks and kill enemies that are on top of the bricks. Uh, you jump to get the question mark boxes. Uh, you jump and you kill the boss character in the game and you actually avoid his fireballs by jumping. So there's a lot of things in the game that are actually really related to jumping. And this explains quite a lot of the controls of Mario. So there are people who are asking why uh, Mario can jump five times his height. Well, it's basically because it, the game is about jumping and you need a lot of control for your jumps. Uh, that's also the reason why Mario has air control. Uh, in Donkey Kong, Mario didn't have air control. So when you press the button, you actually did the jump and you couldn't do anything about it. In Mario, you can move around when you're coming down. This also explains why the terminal velocity of Mario is so low. Because he's kind of floating down, it gives you a lot of control to hit other things and go other places. This also explains why Mario is a boxy character. Uh, if he would be thin, uh, he would have what much less of a space to hit things with. And now because he's kind of boxed up, you can see basically hitting a Goomba, you have a hitbox 
that extends from this end of hitting it with this first pixel to this end hitting it with that pixel, giving you like three times the height, uh, the width of the character as a hitbox for a Goomba, which is a lot, but it's basically there because it's about jumping. So uh, if you compare this with Braid, which is a game about time manipulation, uh, that game does, there's very little platforming in that game. Platforming is just used to move around. That game basically just explores time manipulation. Uh, that's the reason why Braid, you jump only once his height. That's the reason Braid feels kind of floaty. And that's the reason why in Braid, you can actually jump after you've left a ledge and started falling down, because they don't actually want to make it about platforming. Uh, we found a ton of very interesting details, at least for me, very interesting details about these from other games, but uh, we're not going to bore you guys with those details. So if you're interested, you can ask me and I can, uh, I can rant about that. Uh, but so let's go and have some beers, I think. Hey!